My favourite dyslexia joke is about the fact that I wasn't diagnosed with dyslexia until I was 40, when I attended a toga party dressed as a goat. <laughs> it's actually one of my dad's old jokes. So, <laughs> I kind of beat them, can you? Just gonna move a it, bit. Is a, it is a very, uh, a very good joke, that one, I think. <laughs> I, I often go on to explain when I'm, uh, when I'm doing that joke in my stand-up, I go on to explain because one of the things that I like to do in my stand up is to sort of over explain jokes, which is a joke in itself, yeah. you know, because if you need to explain a joke, it hasn't worked. <laughs> so I go on to say, well, you know, unlike the, um, I say this is, a, it's, it's a joke which utilizes the comedic understanding of dyslexia, in which the sufferer, far from having the sort of immediate short term visual memory disorder normally associated with the actual condition, in the comedy understanding of dyslexia, the sufferer simply rearranges the letters within any given word in order to form an amusing anagram. Yeah, I've, I've actually, um, I've got a load of charities that I could work for. Um, I've got MS and I've, I've got a blood clot disorder called ITP and I could be raising money for all these, and I do. But the reason why I'm so proud to be patron of Dyslexia Northeast is, is all about that, the invisibility of the problem and more importantly than anything, especially for young people, it's to try and ensure that people with the condition don't grow up with the feeling of bitterness or lack of confidence that I know so well. Um, and the world is full of, you know, gifts of, of AIDS for, for dyslexic people now. And, um, you know, once you've got the even playing field, you can take advantage of the fact that you think in a very different way to everybody else. So I would like to just where I can just help give anybody who's got a, a reading uh, problem of any kind, just give them that little extra confidence. Stop them from feeling cheated, you know. <laughs>